This channel is all about building fun and sometimes good off-meta decks. Today, I have one I think hits the mark on both accounts. So one of the combos, of course, with Gilgamesh is Blue Marvel. So I have that in the deck along with some zoo cards. And I also have the combination I haven't seen people use before. And that is Jean Grey and Heimdall. With this combination, you can stack the middle or right lane. You can then either, if you're going to win that lane, you just don't play Heimdall. Go to your normal uh, Blue Marvel and Gilgamesh plan. If you're going to lose that lane, well, now you can slide everything around and really position your power in a totally unexpected way. People are not expecting that from a non-move deck. The deck plays fantastically. I've had so much success off stream, off recording. Here is the deck. So we have four one drops. There isn't a strict reliance on Blue Marvel because Sunspot can gain power, Ant-Man can gain power, Nebula and Hawkeye all on their own. Then we have the Mysterio package and you combine him with Mockingbird and Sasquatch. We of course have Blue Marvel for our Gilgamesh. We have Jean Grey and Heimdall, which I already covered, and then Cosmo. So there's a decent amount of utility with this deck and I know it skews a little bit on the expensive side with Mockingbird and Sasquatch. But so here we have the budget version. We've placed in Ebony Ma and Stegron. Now Stegron can shift a card out of the Jean Grey lane, continuing to cause further disruption. So with this version, you mostly, you ideally want to play Jean Grey in the middle. We also have Ebony Maw. You would play him to the left and then you could slide cards over there after the fact. Okay, so we are starting at rank 1,713 and we will see how high we can climb. Okay, first up we have Chaz Coolis. Triskelion. Not a fan. I think I just get down the Hawkeye. Next turn I can get down Ant-Man and Zero. Taking aim. Potentially. Or maybe just a Ravona now that Krakoa's there. Get the plus three. That is interesting. Okay. Interesting play. Using this free Killmonger to take out their Nico is kind of tempting. But I will not do it. A 12 power Heimdall. Wins the adjacent location, so it will be that much middle. Let me play Ant-Man, Nebula. That's two, and my Sasquatch goes down to four cost. You will not be pulling a big card for my... Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay. Like and subscribe. Play Sasquatch. Play Sasquatch right because I'm planning. The reason I'm really afraid to snap is this Gladiator got a, a eight power to another card. Glad I got Sasquatch down. Okay, we know what their eight power card was: the Spider Ham, the Pig. This is going to be a slide. This is going to be a slide. So I'm going to snap. I'm going to play Blue Marvel here. That hopefully they don't beat me here and are going to play. Oh, they build. Okay, perfect, perfect. So they're losing. And now we just do the Heimdall Shuffle. So I have 22 power here. I want more than 22 power here. Or I want more than 22 power middle. 
So I'm going to move these three cards left. So I will have 15, 19 power left. I will leave behind the blue marble. And I will have 23, 25, 31. 31 middle, which should beat... Should still win, even though they're going to win Crown City. What the? I see the way. <laughs> what in the world? What in the world? What? <laughs> Victory. Uh, okay. Uh. That was unexpected. Why would they not play into Crown City? Am I missing something? Okay, so this is this is what I think happened. I think they were giving up Crown City. Even though I was locked there, they were giving up Crown City and just going to overpower middle. They give up that four, that's fine. And so I end up focusing middle and right and then they can get away with five power left that is a risky play though but that's that's what they went with and uh heimdall came through yes we tied middle so it was a lot closer than i expected blue marvel came through this is a game without gilgamesh which is fine you want your decks to work without the featured card in it and we we pulled it out Okay, next up, we are against Room Perp. Cloning that and the cards I have. I will play Nebula. Five Frost, that kind of complicates things. I definitely want Sasquatch. So, I will just play Mysterio, the real Mysterio outright. I want a clone of Sasquatch. And then, what is the rest of my playing look like? I think it's still Sasquatch left, and then maybe Jean Grey right so get sasquatch down everything's gonna slide Behold my mighty hand. i don't have any tech so if this is tribunal i might be in a little bit of trouble Victory. <laughs> and that's why you snap aggressively so sometimes it doesn't work out, sometimes it does, but it all comes out in the wash. Being able to clone Sasquatch, they know I have another Sasquatch and I'll be able to slam it down at potentially at a later turn. My next turn was going to be Jean Grey and Nebula probably. And then the Mysterio slides over, I get the Raft card. And now I can play the Raft card in the Cloning Vats. So... We we were in a very good position here. Okay, next up we are against KOOK. Plus one energy does not do much for me, so we will just get down the nebula into an unrevealed location. It appears I don't want to move cards this game. And we draw Heimdall, of course. <laughs> We will play Cosmo mid. Yes, we will play Cosmo mid. I could play Sunspot, Hawkeye, and Sasquatch. Snap. Uh, let's play this in a different order. Sunspot here, Hawkeye here. I have to try to manage their silk. And I don't want their silk middle. 
But yeah, that's fine. Taking aim. Hawkeye here. I might be able to slide everything over. Sasquatch middle. And then... Maybe I just do blue Marvel Gilgamesh? Hmm. Mysterio is an option as well. If I go Mysterio and Cosmo, my Mockingbird goes down to two. But I wouldn't be able to pair her. Oh, Jean Grey and Mysterio. I think I blew Marvel. I think I blew Marvel. They'll have two extra energy. I could move... Who has priority? They have priority, so I can move the Silk out of the... Craven path. Ant-Man middle... Gilgamesh right? But it really feels like they're going to play a lot of power middle. And I might be able to get away with low power. I might be able to get away with low power over here. So I don't think they're going to leave an open spot middle. Otherwise, I would play Gilgamesh first. But I want the one extra power on Gilgamesh. And we will just say Shang-Chi does not exist. And we will load middle. We will hope that their silk goes ends left. But they might actually load up. Oh, oh I didn't do the math right. Okay, I think we're good. Friendly neighborhood Spider-Man here. I think we're good. I think we're good because we loaded up middle as long as this isn't Sean. It is not Sean. We get the Ant-Man down first for the low power win right. And Gilgamesh cleans up middle. This is a fantastic example of reading your opponent and being able to reliably guess what they are going to do. A very good opponent, top 1,000. So they have Craven over here. My thought was they, in all likelihood, want to have as much power over here as possible because if I play over here, the Silk moves. So because we both abandoned the opposite lanes, it worked out in our favor on this side. And then we knew to stack middle because that's where they have their Angela. That's where people want to stack their power. And chances were that they were going to have a decent amount of power middle. And then they thinking they're going to win middle. And then just fortify left. And if you get a bonus win with Silk, fantastic. So that is the play we read. And we read it perfectly. And we executed to win the game. Okay, we are up against the famous Jar Jar Binks. My give up. My give up. Space Throne. I uh, don't really like to see that. Against a destroy deck. Well, actually, with Space Throne, that might not be so bad. What? Why do you have Scarlet Witch in your deck? <laughs> We'll get that Cosmo mid. Force them to play into Orchis Forge. No, oh, this is Galactus? I mean, this is this is almost definitely Galactus. X23 and Wave? Oh. You just are going to slam a death. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you. So I think I have to stack middle.
Yeah, I think I just have to stack middle. Okay, they got the Killmonger out of the way. That stayed middle, but there's still the rock. Okay, now what am I doing? How many cards did they destroy? I mean, their, their null is nothing. So do I just play Gilgamesh middle? So if I play Gilgamesh middle, they need six points middle? Can they do that? I'm not convinced they can do that. We'll play here just for to block any weird goblin nonsense. Oh, it's actually more because of Ant-Man. I was going to like your video, but not anymore. Okay, we are up against Plus, Yagos. Hey, finally a good opening hand. So I will play Ant-Man. Now the locations are going to hose us. <laughs> oh, yeah, Ant-Man. Right. And we have Heimdall. Look at that. I will play the real Mysterio right. I will play Jean Grey right. And then I will play Cosmo right. And then we will slide everything to the left. So we have the game plan. What are they? Human Torch. I, if they destroy it this turn... That is fine. I'm snapping here. Because no matter what they do, I'm going to have priority here. Not no matter what they do. They could play middle. That'd be a little weird, though. And then I have Cosmo. They took priority. They really did take priority. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, because it destroyed. Okay, we're in good. <laughs> Boy, that was scary. And now we play Cosmo, Indu, Undu, and Hawkeye. And then I will play Sasquatch middle and Heimdall left or middle. Taking aim. There we go. And we nailed them. Victory. So it really was determined on getting priority. And this Cosmo and Jean Grey combination is just fantastic. If you've run an ongoing Spectrum deck, you're familiar with the combo, it's very powerful. And we're plucking that those two cards out of that deck and plopping it into this with Heimdall to shift everything. And you see how this would have played out. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play it out, but like I said, it would have been Sasquatch middle and then Heim slide everything left Heimdall. The reason Sasquatch is middle, when I play Heimdall left, the real Mysterio and Hawkeye slide over. So I'm Phil here, Sasquatch stays, and then these three cards, the real Mysterio, Ant-Man, and Jean Grey slide middle. So I have a ton of power middle. The Cosmo stays behind, and that's where they have to continue playing cards because I'm not sliding Jean Grey until the last turn. So they're going to play cards here. They have an on-reveal deck. Cosmo just absolutely nullifies anything they want to do. Okay, we have Kalaz. Drawing more cards is kind of nice because I can get into what I need faster. I will set up the middle location and we can slide left potentially. I might play out Ant-Man this turn. Yes, I think I will. And hold on to Hawkeye. Well, they can't play any... So they're low-cost cards. I think I'm fine uh, waiting on the... Co playing the Cosmo in another lane. So I'm just going to stack. 
And hopefully this isn't White Take Widow. Aim. That was me. Okay, no problem. So I will play Jean Grey here. Because I can always slide cards. I have priority, so I think I'm gonna snap. Because I can play down Cosmo. I'm actually gonna play Squirrel Girl. In the chance that maybe I draw into... There we go, time to block them up. We have our Heimdall. So I think I play... Do I play Gilgamesh? Self one. Play Stegron here. And I play Heimdall left. That means two go over. Two slide over. So Jean Grey and Cosmo slide over. So I think I do this. Just for power. To get some power middle. And then we do what is known as the Heimdall Shuffle. They do have priority. So that means my Cosmo actually blocks what they're trying to do. They might play a one cost and Darkhawk left because they have Korg in the deck. That makes me think that way. But not having priority I th here, I think, is a good thing because we're just going to slide. Now, they might give up middle, but that would be odd. So I'd, I would be a little surprised if they move their Nocturne. We're not putting too much power left, but again, the Jean Grey and Cosmo is just really tough to deal with. And then we're sliding. So we get five, seven, 16 points of power here. So they need 14 power and they have to play right, which we're abandoning. So we're in a decent spot. And then we have, oh, we only have eight middle. So it, this is a little risky in that if they decide to abandon left and go middle. Where is the real Mysterio? The real Mysterio is actually I see. right, because that's where they had to play first. So I think we win by one. <laughs> the Heimdall slide in action. Victory with the budget version so you can see the the budget ver version can perform we played the namesake gilgamesh uh into cosmo of course so he didn't really gain any power but uh yeah you got to see the gene gray and heimdall combination really come through okay another top 1k player i am on a roll today play nebula mid Meek, a discard player, okay. Onslaught Citadel. Sunspot here. And we don't have Heimdall in hand, so let's not mess around there. Uh this is a Morbius. Okay. That's fine. This is this is a sliding to the left game if we if we can. Do I play down Squirrel Girl? Oh, I also have Stegron. So I'll skip and see what Mirror Dimension turns into. I do have priority now. Doesn't matter. <laughs> so I can kick high, uh, Morbius right. But maybe it does matter. Maybe they play right here. So let me play Stegron down. Yeah. So let's stack their power right. Is this a Dracula? It is. Perfect. That's kind of nice. Especially if I draw into Heimdall. Uh, Jean Grey? Question mark? Hawkeye? Squirrel Girl? So forcing them to play middle forces them to play into a losing lane because I don't know how they beat that much power. I am and then I would say I could slam Gilgamesh, but 
One, two, three. Twelve? Did they discard a swarm? They didn't. Opponent snapped. Can they get enough power left? Because Meek gains when you discard a card, this gains plus one. So Meek gains another. I'm seeing this through. What? Uh, okay. Does Meek gain enough? Two, three? Oh! He does not gain enough. I am Apocalypse! Huh. I am having much better luck with this budget version. <laughs> uh, yeah, this... This really came together. Uh, Stegron coming through with Jean Grey. We made them play into a losing lane. We have a big boy to play in Gilgamesh. Slam down that power. Hawkeye. Who runs Hawkeye in their deck? So this, this top ranked player probably said, this person doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> they played Hawkeye and Squirrel Girl and Jean Grey on the last turn, get out of here. So they didn't respect it. We were able to put all of their power into one lane with the courtesy of Stegron and clean up the other lane with Gilgamesh. Okay, so that's where I'm calling it for today. We cracked into the top 1,400. We are at 1,338. And I had varying levels of success. I was actually for some weird reason, more successful with the budget version. So it is competitive, and I had a good cross-section of games, hopefully to show you from that version and from the more expensive version. So this is the budget version. Again, we have a couple of different lines here, maybe three different lines. So you can really catch players off guard and snap confidently while they don't know what in the world is about to happen to them. Which is why I say, which is why I personally am a fan of snapping aggressively, because I know the position I'm in. I, for the most part, know the decks that I'm facing because they are just meta decks. So I know what's in them. And my opponent doesn't know what's in my deck. Hopefully, you enjoyed the gameplay. Let me know if you have any questions or your own substitutions to these decks. And until next time. So, is this Nightcrawler? <laughs> Can I snap again? <laughs> what? And now Blue Marvel really cleans up. And then we just slam Blue Marvel down to win all three lanes. Yeah. That was quite the gambit. <laughs>